well from all of us uh, gathered here at St. Paul Seminary Chapel this morning, Father uh, Tom Sparacino, um, our, our seminarians, uh, Dan and Eric uh, and Locke, uh, we wish you the very best on this day when uh, we need, every single one of us needs to really feel the power of the Holy Spirit. September 18th, 1949, June 1st, 1958, April 30th, 1960, May 3rd, 1975, April 6th, 1997. Those were all Pentecost moments in my life. The dates of my baptism and my first communion, my confirmation, my ordination as a priest and my ordination as a bishop. And you too have those Pentecost moments. And it's so important for us to celebrate this great feast, not simply because it marks the end of the Easter season, not only because it marks what we know to be the birthday of the church, but for each and all of us very personally, it is important for us to take stock on this most holy day of all of this Pentecost moments in our lives. And you know, rather than just taking a look at Pentecost as the moment when the Holy Spirit came down on the apostles, it was a historic event, and then put it aside until next year this time. It is important to remember that the Holy Spirit came down upon the apostles and the Blessed Mother in that upper room of the Cenacle, surely on the day of Pentecost, but many other times in the course of their lives. And so this morning, I'd like to uh, ask you to share with me some reflection about what the Holy Spirit means, what that meant for the apostles, and what it means for you and me. But before that we could do that, it's important for us to think about how are the ways in which the Holy Spirit is uh, pictured for us, symbolized for us. And as we heard today in the first reading, so beautifully read in Viet Vietnamese by Locke, and then read in English by Eric. The spirit is tongues of fire resting on the heads of the apostles gathered in that upper room. And we also know, and we heard it from the gospel, that the Holy Spirit was the breath coming upon the apostles, a breath of life. We've heard in the gospels, especially in John's third chapter, when Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus, how the spirit is a wind, a mighty wind that goes to, to clear out the cobwebs, if you will. We know that the spirit is also called the voice present with the Father at the creation of the world, and we hear it in the, in the book of Genesis. But today, my sisters and brothers, I'd ask you to think with me for a moment about another image of the Holy Spirit, which is, is power. And you and I are well aware of power in the world in which we live. We have personal powers, all of us being able to use the gifts and talents that we have to hopefully create a better world. and there are economic powers and there are intellectual powers and there are computer powers, any number of variety of powers that exist in the world. But today, we need to put aside all of those powers and focus on the power of the Holy Spirit. If you happen to pick up a, a, a Greek uh, dictionary, you would see that the translation of the Greek word for power in the English language is dynamo. And so while in many ways we can take a look at the definition of power as somehow being able to get things done, when we take a look at the dynamo of the Holy Spirit, we're talking about more than getting something done. We're talking about massive change that goes to the heart, a sweeping change, a metanoia, a whole different way of looking at things. Let's take a look at what that meant for those apostles, huh? Both in the upper room uh, on the, uh, the Easter Sunday night, as we heard Father Tom read that gospel, 
And with the Blessed Mother and the Apostles in the upper room of the Seneca on the moment of Pentecost, there they were in both instances, fearful, guilty, unsure, and the Spirit comes as the dynamo, goes to their hearts and changes their fear into courage, their doubt into strong faith, and their inactivity into a missionary movement that has come down to us to this very day. And you know, my sisters and brothers, whenever you, you and I take a look at any time that the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the scriptures, the power of the Spirit does a dynamic change in a person's life. Think for a moment about the story that we read at, at the announcement that Mary would become the mother of the Messiah. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Holy Spirit will be with you. There was a dynamic change in Mary. And think about that change that took place in Paul's life, going from a murder of Christians to become his strongest voice for Jesus to Jew and Gentile alike. Over the course of these 50 days of, of Easter, we have been reading very carefully and meditating on the story of the Acts of the Apostles and all that happened with the growth of the church and all that happened to so many people whose lives were radically changed happened not simply because of something that Paul or any of the Apostles said, but because of the power of the Spirit, a dynamic movement that touched the hearts of so many people and a dynamic power that needs to touch our lives today. You know, I would be remiss if I didn't make reference to a great tragedy that has come upon our country and the world over the course of this week. The event of the, the tragic death of a man in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And as today we remember George Floyd and the members of his family and, our, and especially our sisters and brothers who are African Americans. And we take a look at all that's been happening over the course of these days. We need the power of the Spirit. We need the Spirit's dynamic activity to reach down into our hearts and create massive change. A change that demands that we tear down walls and build bridges. A change that means we've got to put aside bigotry and hatred and let all those things be changed into love. A dynamic power that takes us back to that very first story that we read in the sacred scriptures of God creating us in his image and likeness and how far we have gone away from that image and likeness. We need the power of God's spirit to do a sweeping change in our hearts so that we likewise can be instruments of that kind of change in the world in which we live through the words that we speak and the deeds that we in fact do. The reason why the Holy Spirit came down upon the apostles in that upper room of Pentecost, the reason why they went outside the doors of that upper room and proclaimed a message that the world needed to hear was to spread the good news of Jesus who comes to give us peace and who comes to give us the promise of eternal life. And so today, my sisters and brothers, let's think about those Pentecost moments in our lives. And maybe it might be a good idea for you to go back and take a look at those dates that apply to those Pentecost moments of your baptism and your first communion and your confirmation and your wedding. And see what the Spirit wanted to do, to do with and through you at those moments. But let's also recollect that just as the Spirit has in fact been moving certainly at the moment of Pentecost, but countless times since then in the history of the world, the Spirit continues to move in and through us. If we're serious about Jesus Christ, and if we're serious about this great feast of Pentecost, 
Let's let the Spirit, yes, be a voice that speaks to us. Yes, let's let the Spirit be a tongue of fire that's over our heads. Let's let the Spirit be a breath taking away the cobwebs of our lives. Let's let the Spirit be a wind that causes change in our world. And most especially, let's let the Spirit be a power, a dynamo that helps us become more the people that God created us to be and a dynamo that helps the world become God's creation more visibly as well.